Hi, welcome to another lecture of Comics Gekulan. My name is Abraham Hanamijo. And just wanted to let you know a little bit more about me. But since you don't see me because it's that table, uh, or probably our videographer or uh, the person in charge of doing the editing will put instead of this um, rich other face, put actually my photo. So that's me. I started drawing when I was a kid and I did a uh, little galleries for my grandmother when I was growing up and she gave us like a 25 cents for each piece that she liked and then again I uh, went to high school and I was one of those kids who while the class was happening <laughs> I was doing sketches not good for math but it is good for your creativity and Later on, I went to college, study art and illustration and a lot of other things. So I'm a graphic designer, illustrator, of, I also do photography and writing here and there. And so before we start, I wanted to, because I am a multimedia artist, I guess, I wanted to get you inspired. So I wrote this poem a while back and I wanted to share it. So I wrote, choose the right colors, but to tell you the truth, they will end up choosing you. From the imagination of your mind to the otherwise white surface of the material world, do leave a mark. Water, oil, acrylic, none are idyllic. Charcoal, pastel, graphite, ink, all are linked by intent, whether it's pink or dark green, matte or satin, for their existence will linger beyond the wilder of the brush, ripped, crushed, sculpted, create or destroyed, but do not hesitate, do leave a mark. Thank you. Uh, the title for that poem is The Way of Art. And now that you're inspired, because I, I think that all the medias that we use to create art are really important, especially right now that um, we have a pandemic going on. This is one of the reasons we're trying to keep in touch because we, sh we did uh, this first series live with a classroom, right? But it's not possible anymore. So we still want to create and we are able to create stuff in our houses, right? So this is what we do in these video lectures and hope to you guys uh, like it. So before we start, um, I just wanna make sure that we are in the same page or should I say two pages for we are creating a two page comic book. And Javier Hernandez, who is the creator of El Muerto and who has pro, uh, done previous lectures that you probably have done before watching this one, I hope. And he has teach you a couple of things of how to, how, what is the lingo and the comics and how to create a story and how to uh, break it down, right? So just wanted to make sure that we are in the same um, phase of the project, right? So we have created an idea of a mental health problem. For me, I wanted to talk about um, um, PTSD. Uh, it's because I, I was watching um, The Last Samurai a couple months back, I guess. And there's this scene where uh, Tom Cruise, or who should I say the general of the American uh, uh, people who come and help uh, the Japanese, um, He's basically torn uh, by the fact that he was in war in the Indian Wars in North America, and he did a couple of free really bad things. And he approached this um, person who was his captor and also became later his friend, telling him, "Hey, <laughs> this is what's going on." The other guy tells him, "I know that you don't sleep. Only us warriors know the brutal things that we have done in the past." And I think I wanted to incorporate this idea of people who went to wars and how they came out of them. 
PTSD become being one of them. So first, um, what I do is I create a really fast um, draft. Fast, do not worry too much about details, just get the idea down. And you can also put notes if, in case you don't know what you, you, you were drawing. I'm really fast at these ones. So I got my ideas and also I put notes like this note knowing that a 11 by eight and a half is gonna be the size of the page, which is really important for me. So I know how things are gonna end up looking because if you draw for something wider, if they have to squish it down, it's gonna look bad. So I always try to get um, the right size when I'm drawing for a specific uh, format. So I have this. Then I move on. I move on to a more uh, still fast sketch, and I got my ideas more down. But again, do not focus too much into detail. These stages that are really important because if you waste a lot of time drawing something that you're not gonna like later, it's gonna be hard for you to say, okay, let's just take it off. People usually what they do is they just say, oh, I really work on it. I'll just leave it there. But it's more flexible if you just do as fast as you can, change things here and there. For me, it's never a bad time to change stuff. So have that. Then I proceeded to create my, um, I will call it kind of a, a the final draft. So this is what I wanted to actually ink. And I say to you guys, always make sure that you have your margins correct. I mean, <laughs> it sounds like a logical thing to do, but people sometimes forget. And Luis, who is the director of these programs, um, he told me that uh, it's gonna be full bleed, but I always <laughs> don't trust too much the printing. So I always leave margins for most of my work. And that way when the page turns in a comic book, this fold is not gonna, Take some details that you wanted to incorporate into your piece, right? So always leave margin, especially that. Okay, just letting you know. So I have my first page here. And again, I suggest you guys to do it more lightly in the second and this draft, the final draft. But I did a little more thick, um, more darker, so you guys can see it. And because I knew I was gonna leave it like this because you can actually work on top of your uh, final draft sorry pencil if you want to but since i knew i was going to do videos i wanted to keep the steps right so we have this one and then i proceeded to scan it and do a little photoshop to um, make it lighter and also to take away some stuff that was kind of dirty and ended up with this piece so now that we're at this stage, we are ready for inking. And first I wanted to introduce you to this uh, little tool that is really infamous. Uh, and when you talk about inking, and it's this, um, which is a dipping pen. And it basically comes after the quill dipping pen which is basically was back in the day was a quilt and they will dip it into these ink wells and then from there start writing or drawing right and these modern ones have the advantages of taking away these nibs which are really cool and you can change it for different types depending on what the flow that you want to work with or the type of lines that you want to create and for anybody else suggest for you to try them they're really cool and I, I really like the lines that you can get out of them um, but today we're not going to work on them just wanted to mention it just to give you more options and tools and um, just trying to create something simple now and more clean because these ones require more practice but definitely really cool to get them. Dipping pens, please check them out. So first I wanted to, um, to talk about this line weight. What line weight is, 
it's basically the type of lines that you'll be working on. Your drawing you have from thick or thin lines, or you can um, use these cool little things that are microns, which I'll be using for my actual piece. These are the ones that I like because um, they come in this set and, and it has different sizes. So if I wanna be changing lines and assign lines for different parts of my drawing, I'll just go back to the number that I knew I was using, right? So it keeps things really well um, formatted. Uh, so we have really tiny ones, it's like 500. Really? See, it's super thin. And then we have, I think 50 is the biggest one that has. Let me find it. It's five, I guess. So that's thicker, right? And also comes with these, um, brush which has a br on the top see if i find it oh here you go so this is the other type of line that you can use on your work so from thin to thick you just have to press it or from thick to thin right so it all depends on the type of line that you want to create and i'm going to show you a little sample of line work. So for you guys um, that maybe not know, this is our second um, volume that we're creating with you guys. This is the first one, Comics Que Curan. And I'm gonna show you my piece. Um, here's the piece that I did for that one. And I think once, if you use one line, you can get a decent drawing, it looks nice, but once you start mixing the lines, you become, uh, you create something more um, dynamic. For example, the way I did it for this piece is the characters have their outline thicker, so that makes them pop up, making a little more foreground. And then I also use uh, thick lines for, um, the panels which I did breaking down just to create some different dynamic into them because every time that I use uh, a new project I want to challenge how the format is so <laughs> I didn't want to do just um, the regular uh, panels I wanted to do something that shows the anger because this was was on anger right so that helped me divide each panel right and the inside, the characters inside, they have a skinnier line. So that creates some, some distance, right? So we have foreground and then kind of the background with the characters, right? So that's the things that you can achieve with that. So that's what line work is, right? So continuing with line weight, uh, I already went ahead and outline everything on my uh, piece so for these again I did um, these uh, three uh, different sizes of my macrons and I went from uh, the, the biggest one that I had I think it was 80 then I went to 3 and then to 500 and so you see, this is the thickest ones, the outlines on the outside, especially the panels. I wanted to thick it thicker to make a good division. And for the character, I did um, uh, the medium size of them. And just when I went to into the little details here and there is when I use the smallest one that I have. So that's kind of what you end up doing with line weight. And because ink has this um, interesting way of creating contrast, it's really good because we have black and white, right? It's immediate. 
but also we have uh, we want to create um, a grayscale to create shadows and how do we do this where we only have black and white well this is different techniques I'm gonna show you first one I'm gonna show you with this um, thick marker so you can see more easily is um, it's the first technique uh, it's uh, gonna be uh, linear hatching which is this and it's also called feathering but the way it works is the more darker you want to get the more lines you want to put in it and that's how you end up having more um, shadows more of a gradient so I'm gonna use that technique right now on this part of the wall because it has um, this division and I want to create a shadow that comes from this light so I'm gonna actually let me see if I can get a, one of my rulers make it faster and see how it works so we have some shadows going there and we can actually follow this and create these shadows here See this area here, it's already um, darker. And then uh, we have another cool technique um, that's kind of a continuation of linear hatching, which is called cross hatching, which is basically the same we have. But also adds these other lines, right? So that's cross hatching, and I'm gonna use it in my piece. Uh, probably what part? Let me find a cool part. I wanna use it on. You know, I'm gonna use it inside the uh, this area. So that's uh, cross hatching. And to continue with more ink um, techniques, um, we have the next one, which is um, called cross counter. And what cross counter do is um, It's kind of like um, cross hatching, but as you can see, we have created this curve, and this um, technique is good for creating um, a sense of roundness in an object. And I'm gonna use it for um, probably the arms of my soldier because they're round and you know, let's continue it I 
Also, you probably can do it a little bit on the pants. Mm -hmm. And right here, we still have uh, more techniques coming. Um, another technique that I want to use um, it's uh, spotting, oh no, sorry, stri stipling. And uh, stipling is um, basically a technique where instead of creating lines to create shadow or shade or a gradient, here's my big one. You're gonna start creating dots. And a lot of printers, especially back in the day, use this technique to create your prints. So it's pretty efficient. And for this one, I wanted to use to create um, texture. I'm gonna use it for my bricks that are in the wall. And it depends on um, what kind of um, you want to create a darker places in the bricks you just start adding more lines like over here we have our shadows I'll probably put more and just continue doing it just for the time sake I'm gonna leave it at that but you start seeing how these bricks are having uh, now a texture. And um, the last thing you, um, that I want to show you is how to... Uh, well, no, actually, the last, I have another one that I'll show you, but that's going to be at the end. Um, it's uh, spotting blacks. Um, we have some parts that we really want to just cover in black, and that's what's called um, spotting blacks. And... You usually have a line outlines that tells you where uh, the blacks are going to be held and I already have some of that and let's see let me um, oh this part uh, because um, these metals of um, textures have this a lot of contrast for the reflections that they possess so I'm gonna actually do it um, for these ones okay so let's start so I use markers for that because it covers more of the area it's <laughs> another thing sometimes they dry it up so it's good to test them and also another tip is um, whenever you're working with ink try to work from top to bottom so that way you don't smudge stuff that you already have done because it's still wet there you go we have that spot I also want to do some of um, black spanning in this last nightmare scene that I have on my last panel because it has really thick I want to create a lot of contrast on that part let's see if I have a better uh, marker that's really more wet okay yeah they feel like this was better mm -hmm. I think with markers you want to do it as fast as you can and uh, make a stroke on top of the other stroke so it still keeps the wetness of it and you don't leave these weird lines behind <laughs> try to do as fast as you can but still staying on the lines It's going to be probably more parts of um, my drawing that needs um, spotting, but I 
I'll just do it as fast as I can for this demo. And again, you always uh, have <laughs> to have music. That's my theory. <laughs> Every time you're working, at least put some music. I'm not doing it right now because um, I'm talking to you guys in this video and I want to get uh, get you uh, distracted with the sounds of my cool music. Oh, but um, I'm going to this uh, last technique, um, which is uh, ink wash and for that we will need a little bit more um, tricky and a little messy tools so I use this to get um, <clears throat> some water <sighs> and we have the ink again the trick for this technique is basically to get different tones out of black so what I like doing um, is to get a lot of, oof, this black is super old. <laughs> oh, my ink is super old. Um, well, we'll see what we can do. So we have our purest black. Oh my God, this is really old. And you know, actually, might uh, usually use uh, bamboo, um, which nowadays I don't think is bamboo um, brushes, but they're cool if you want to do something bigger. But um, since what I'm doing now it's something a bit different, I'm gonna try it with these brushes a little thicker and more. Uh, so basically, what you want to do is have add water to some of the other parts and the trick is to make different tones of black so we have let's try to get the most minimal black as I can goes for my panel here and hopefully it works but the the cool thing that what I um, what I did is um, that I I'm actually let me show you first in the big paper so it's a little more easy to see okay so first we start having our the water that has less ink in it try to make it dry. I mean the pencil on also on all the time on the paper so see we have some kind of uh, gray and then um, let's say we want to add more right so usually you want to wait a little bit till it dries but you can start adding more black see more of the ink depends on the concentration And it's always good to have um, something to try it out. It's also a different way of doing it. Um, for example, you can have this, and this will create a texture. Oh, hold on. <laughs> so you can create textures with um, paper, depends on how much I ones absorb a lot so I wasn't able to get as much and this ink is super old it's even shinier now oh, well wow. well it is what it is um so the reason I wanted to use this is because I have in one of my panels I want to create this bomb this explosion and it, I have a little bit of outline but not a lot either. So we'll see what we can do about it. Um, let's try to get as dry as possible to create something more like a bomb. The 
this definitely is not the best paper either. Um, but I always try new things and again I did it uh, purposefully because um, I made copies so this may not be my last um, my final piece I can still do variations of it but I still have some faith in this Always try to use different tools and techniques because you never know what you're gonna end up finding. See, maybe you end up finding something that you like, some technique that you like, or it gives you inspiration to do something else too. So if you have even a better paper than the one that I have, because I'm just using regular print paper, because I want to show you guys that you can have really cool stuff out of uh, simple uh, tools. We have you can even do pencil, um, regular pens, and almost there. I see like. I have kind of a typical cloud. And can I want to get it a little darker? Especially here. And here we go, we have some type of bomb going off. You can add more um, details here of stuff flying. Yeah. Don't be afraid of mixing uh, different media or different tools. For example, if I want to get even darker, I could probably some my marker. All right. So here we go, and that concludes today's uh, lesson of inking. We're gonna move on to color and the next lecture. Um, good night, guys.